Good afternoon. I'm Chaplain Blackburn, and I want you to know it's a real privilege and honor to welcome all of you to Cantata. I especially think of our residents and our staff, many guests that are joining us, board members, family members of our kids, alumni, donors, friends, and others. I welcome all of you to this special celebration that we will enter into this afternoon. You know, Christianity throughout its history has had times of persecution, sometimes very intense persecution. One of those times was in the year 61 AD. The empire thought that it had control because it had imprisoned one of Christianity's biggest voices, the Apostle Paul. And while he sat in a prison cell in the city of Rome, they found out very quickly that you cannot silence the great lion of God. Because from that prison cell, Paul wrote several letters to believers throughout the Mediterranean world and to us today. One of those letters that he wrote is Philippians. And in the text of Philippians, he tells believers and Christians and disciples in that military colony of Philippi, he tells them, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. And then just a little, little farther down in the text, he says, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am in. Well, now just think about that for a moment. How could someone be sitting in a jail cell and talk about rejoicing? Well, Paul could do it because he knew in his soul, in his heart, that in Jesus, you have true joy and contentment. In Jesus, you have real joy and contentment. In Jesus, you have genuine joy and contentment. And in Jesus, deep, deep down in your soul, you have joy and contentment. That's how he could write those words. But the Apostle Paul also possessed a grand reality. He had discovered it. And I, I would call it the grandest reality. And I pray that you possess it today, just like the Apostle Paul did. And if you don't, I pray that you can possess it before the sun sets this evening. That grand reality is this, the Christ is in control. In the beginning was a song, and the song was God's joy, and God was joy, sung beautifully to a world surrounded in silence here now, that joy has come again. On a silent night, a son is given, and I picture God laughing at the irony as he orchestrates the symphony that history's been waiting to sing along to, joy has come. It sounds like angels sweeping throughout a city, whispering God's wonder to the world that the wait is finally over, joy has come. It sounds like the laughter of a child who was born to parents who had long been barren as it echoes back to the story of a God who always gives life no matter the limitation. We try to figure it out ourselves. We seized autonomy from God, trying to define good and evil in a fallen world felt like trying to play a perfect song on broken instruments. We all forgot our part and the world became more noise than music, more weeping than laughing, more ashes than beauty and sorrow almost swallowed the story whole. But joy has come. It sounds like the promised one of Israel has come so that all the empty might be filled. Joy has come. It sounds like the pouring out of the fullness of God and the one that is fully man. It sounds like an answer being spoken into the question of a womb, a truth wrapped in mystery, a joy wrapped in song, a God wrapped in flesh for our lives to be wrapped in his. Joy has come. May we join in this cosmic celebration for a child has come to teach our tongues the lyrics of heaven's anthem. 
May we seek the holy day of the giver, not a holiday for consumers. May we not place our joy in what we can buy, but rather in the one who has come so that we might be purchased. We can find the joy that is limitless and infinite and true joy to the world. For the Lord has come, joy has come through this child, this Christ our Lord. Let us sing, let us all prepare to receive the coming of our King, the coming of joy. Christmas, a time to celebrate the gift of God's one and only Son. A time to relive the miraculous story that would change the world forever. The arrival of our long-expected Savior was here. Let men and heavenly hosts rejoice. Joy to the world, Christ has come. The breath of heaven filled the earth. Emmanuel, God with us, born into a stable. Born both Son of David and Son of God, the King of Kings now dwelt among us. His kingdom would know no end. His love would reign forever. Joy to the world, Christ has come. We could not comprehend his ways, our wonderful counselor. The sinless shepherd who'd perform miracles and give freely the bread of life and living water. We would hunger and thirst no more. Joy to the world, Christ has come. Christmas, a time to celebrate the arrival of the Messiah, the Anointed One. A time to honor the day Jesus entered our messy world to cleanse it of all sin and shame. To be the spotless lamb, to redeem us from death. To be the giver of eternal life, the greatest gift we could ever receive. Joy to the world, Christ has come. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this season of celebration of salvation's arrival. Joy to the world, Christ has come. Lord, we will go and tell the story of Christmas. We will share the gift of your love with others. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. We will sing loudly the carols of Christ's birth. Hark for herald, angels sing, glory to the newborn King. O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Joy, Joy, Joy to, to the world, world. Christ, Christ has come. come. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true.
This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. If I leave Mary, then I will lose her. If I stay, we will be the talk of the village. I don't know if I can handle this. This wasn't supposed to happen. This isn't what I imagined for us. Everyone will judge and look down on us. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Stay? Leave? I just don't know. I love Mary, but I'm concerned what this would do to her. To me. To us. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. Expectation Knowing our Savior's on his way Oh, what a glorious day From the throne of heaven To that lonely manger bed The Word became flesh The joy of Christmas, the light of the world Messiah, Lord of Lords, He is the one we adore. We stand in awe and wonder, join with the angels and we sing.
At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census, and because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. So the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Uh, friends, as we gather here with our cantata tonight, it's no big secret that uh, things are not the way they normally are. Uh, things have been interrupted. Uh, for one, we haven't been, we're not gathering here in the chapel together the way we normally would. First time ever. COVID has kicked us out and made us exiles. And I suspect every single one of you listening know what it's like to be exiled this year due to COVID. Um, many of my young friends out here um, have been exiled from their favorite extracurricular activities. Um, basketball, for instance, my, my friends who play high school basketball have been exiled from the gym and from the school bus, haven't been able to play a single game. Um, my young friends, all of you know what it's like to be exiled from the school classroom and have to do online learning at, at, at home. Um, House parents, you know all too well what it's like for your students to be exiled from the classroom and do online learning at home. It's been hard on everybody. Um, every single one of you listening, I suspect, know what it's like to be exiled from friends at this time where we have not been able to be together with everyone the way we would like to at any given time. Um, we've been exiled from family where we're not able to gather for family things like we normally would. A whole bunch of you had Thanksgiving interrupted and weren't able to do Thanksgiving the way you normally would. Um, a whole bunch of you listening right now are, are have a change of Christmas plans of um, uh, not able to be with family the way you normally would because COVID has made us exiles. Um, important family um, important life celebrations, like uh, I have a friend who's not able to be at her brother's wedding this weekend because uh, COVID has uh, made us exiles. Um, I have a friend who was not able to take fall engagement pictures with his fiance because of COVID. Uh, and, and maybe maybe saddest of all, um, we've been stripped. All, we've all been stripped of uh, smiles and hugs. Yeah. 
um, our smiles have been covered with masks and our hugs um, have been put away with social distancing. So we become mm-hmm. exiles in this very unusual time that we didn't see coming. So exiles, I like you to listen tonight to what the Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter 61. Verse 1, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted. And then in verse 7, it goes on to say, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You'll possess a double portion of prosperity and Everlasting joy will be yours. So, let me tell you about joy. Joy is different than a thrill. It's not something that you can make, measure, or buy. It's a gift that comes from God, and it comes from within. And as best I could describe it, it's something wonderful beyond words in here that God gives us as we're becoming that which we've always been created to be. COVID-19 okay, can extinguish pleasure and fun, and it has. But it cannot ever extinguish joy that comes from God. Let me say that again. COVID-19 can extinguish pleasure and fun, but it cannot extinguish joy that comes from God. The, The story that we all heard tonight comes to us from history, real history, 2,000 years ago. And this story throughout the centuries has been bringing joy through intense times of war, famine, natural disasters, and disease. And and friends, you can rest assured tonight that it will continue bringing joy through this COVID pandemic now. So something that we've been talking about here in chapel through Advent is how Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, he is in time, but through time and beyond time. So past, present, future, the living Jesus Christ comes to us in history, mystery, and majesty. Meaning that he came born in a manger in history. We heard the story again tonight. He comes to us in mystery, which is what the Apostle Paul would say, Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's the living spirit of the living Jesus Christ inhabiting us and living in his people now. And as we uh, are prepared by God all right, um, through repentance, we uh, receive God's comfort as we await his majestic return where he sets everything right once and for all. So, as he comes to us in history, mystery, and majesty, all right, we're awaiting his majestic return. Since we're awaiting his majestic return, um, we don't want to live our lives sleepwalking in sin. But neither do we want to live cowardly in fear. Christians, since Christ is returning in majesty, we want to live our lives boldly in faith, loving people with all we got, eagerly awaiting Christ's return. And and as we do this, we too experience this joy everlasting. So tonight we're going to light our third Advent candle, knowing that Christ comes to us in history mystery and majesty and as he comes he brings us comfort through repentance and as we wait and as we love people 
through thick and thin, we experience joy everlasting. And that's good news. So one tradition that has not been called off due to the COVID pandemic is uh, a time of candlelight here in our cantata service. So I know uh, some of you in the homes who are listening tonight uh, have candles, and at this time you're invited to light your candle. And those who might be uh, watching our service from far and wide, you're invited to, to light a candle at this time and join us as Grace and Miss Angela lead us in silent night. thank everyone for joining us for cantata this year and i know that maybe these circumstances are less than ideal but i pray that that you heard god speak loud and clear tonight and that you know that that jesus comes to us in history mystery and majesty and he came to bring us everlasting joy um, one tradition that has been interrupted due to COVID is uh, when our campus is open, a normal cantata year, we, we have uh, some really good neighbors across the highway. There are uh, some Franciscan sisters, uh, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, who normally come over here and they'll sing carols and, and stop in at our home parties and, and pray blessing over the campus. Obviously in a year like this, they're not able to- hey. not able to join us there. Um, 
they bring such a sweet spirit. I have such fond memories of them over here singing that I, it's almost like I can hear them now. Sweetly singing on the plains. <sighs> Merry Christmas! From God's Word. In Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here's a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host praising God and singing. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing on the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Bless you.